Now, out in India, the government in India has recently made a move to ban large currency notes. And they're basically pushing towards a cashless society. They removed the 500, the 1,000 rupee note. They were banned throughout the country. And we see right now that you might be thinking, well, these are very big notes. Who really cares? I mean, who carries this around? But they exchange for just a few American dollars and represent 85% of the cra the cash transactions in the country and the ban sparked a run on the banks in India this week with customers forming massive lines at banks trying to get their cash out while they stood could and what happened was the ATM, ATM machines they were emptied nearly half of India's 202,000 ATMs were shut down on Friday because they ran out of cash and people stood on lines they were trying to get the new bills trying to get rid of their old bills and there was complete chaos in the region and we can see many areas were shutting down like the traders in Delhi's vegetable market they said they were shutting down the market because cash was running out and the banks and the ATMs were dispensing a little bit of cash people couldn't get their hands on it and we've talked about this in many many reports where the economic collapse would make it where you couldn't get cash banks would shut down ATMs would be emptied actually Cliff High where I just did an interview with him on Friday which is on the X22 report spotlight YouTube channel in his reports it says ATMs will not have cash in them actually there'll be a cash crisis and we can see these are examples around the world of what it would look like and we can see right now at each one of these countries they are experiencing what everyone is going to experience once this economy comes down now we understand Trump is now setting up his new cabinet he's filling positions he's also looking at everything the government has done and I want everyone to be a little bit careful about saying oh he's going to do everything he said he was going to do we still have the shadow government we still have them pushing their ideas their agendas their goals and I we have to remember and those people that have been following me, who've been listening, who understand what has been happening around the world, I need to mention a person named Cyprus in Greece and Varifakis, where the people of Greece wanted a change. They wanted the corrupt president out who was dealing with Goldman Sachs. They wanted someone new in the country. And Cyprus made a lot of promises. He wasn't going to deal with the central banks. There's going to be no austerity. He was going to help Greece, and people voted for him. Landslide. And what happened was, he fought with the central bankers. And then, all of a sudden, he folded. He went against the people. There was more austerity, a lot of privatization, a lot of sell-off of many of the assets of Greece. And here we are with a new president who promised a lot and we understand that there is still the shadow government the central bank neocons who have certain goals already Trump says that he might even keep parts of Obamacare now during his campaign he said Obamacare was a complete disaster we need to get rid of it now are there certain parts of Obamacare that might be good? Maybe. Because he was pointing to the parts where it said it banned insurers denying coverage to individuals who are sick. That might be a good part. Allowing children to stay on their parents' plans for a period of time. But we have many other parts of Obamacare which are absolutely horrific. So we need to see what he does with that. We see already that Donald Trump might be appointing 
a new CIA chief. And he was the mastermind behind the torture program under Bush, Jose Rodriguez. He was one of the master masterminds behind the, the torture and retention program. And Trump is looking at him to run the CIA. Remember, back then, 136 individuals were detained without trial and subjected to torture in CIA black sites worldwide. So, we see that there are individuals trying to get into his circle right now to control what is going on. Actually, we have Ron Paul out there who's saying that Trump is under a lot of pressure right now to take advice from people who represent the deepest and darkest interests at work in foreign policy. And he says he needs to be worried about the shadow government. Actually, Ron Paul says he's skeptical on whether Trump will actually follow through on many of his campaign promises. And remember, we have to go back to the actions of the president, not what they say, not what they say during the campaign, but actually what they do in office. Because we have the problem with the shadow government, the deep state, the central banks. And they're going to push as hard as they possibly can to reach their goals. And their goals are the collapse of the system. Their goals is total domination of the world and war. We see out in South Korea, a 100,000 staged the largest ever protest in Seoul. And they demand the resignation of Park Geun-hye. Uh, they want this person out, the president out of office because of corruption favors given to friends and favors given to friends who actually influence the government decisions for personal gains. Well, we see this right here in the United States, but we can see the people are very unhappy about this. And there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people out there protesting to say, you know what, we've had enough. We see NATO is in a panic right now. NATO Secretary Jen Stoltenberg, well, they drafted a secret report which includes the worst case scenario in which Trump orders U.S. troops to withdraw from Europe. And we can see right now that NATO is out there saying that if we withdraw from all these areas, Russia's gonna, just going to take over the entire area. Well, Russia has never made this move. Russia never even showed any type of action that they were going to do this. Actually, it was NATO first that moved the troops, the military assets, up to the border of Russia. Russia has only been moving troops up to their border inside their own country to counter what NATO is doing. But we can see right now that the shadow government, the deep state, the central banks, they're pushing their agendas. Obama right now, he's trying to provoke confrontation with Russia before Trump gets into the White House. According to reports, we can see right now there were heavily loaded containers arriving at the northern German port at the end of October. The containers then will be transported to a depot for storage and distribution to other locations across Europe. And this is coming from a U.S. Army statement. We also know that the Pentagon announced to deploy less, at least 6,000 American soldiers in heavily, and heavy armor to Eastern Europe to counter Russia. And Obama right now is going to demand Greece to close its ports to Russian warships. Remember, they're still pushing their goals. We are not out of the woods by, by any stretch of the imagination. And we can see right now that even Hillary Clinton and George Soros, they are still pushing the rioting, the protests across America. They haven't stopped. They're trying to put as much pressure, create as much chaos as they possibly can in this short period of time. We see right now out in Syria, the Islamic State is using chemical weapons. The UN just filed a report saying that, yes, chemical weapons by the Islamic State is on the rise. 
We know that the moderate rebels, al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, all the terrorist groups that are part of the United States government central bankers, they are using chemical weapons in these areas. And of course, the U.S. is backing this. Think about this for a second. We see right now the U.S. is stepping away from plans to punish Syria for using chemical weapons. Gee, why is that? Because there is no proof. They can't go forward with it. And we can see a lot of those in power in the shadow government deep state. They're stepping away certain areas where they might be caught in a lie. We see Syria right now is giving the rebels 24 hours to surrender in Aleppo. And if they don't surrender, they will face serious consequences. What are those consequences? Well, the Syrian government, the Russian government, they have troops on the ready to have and to launch a massive military operation in 24 hours. They will clean out and kill everything in sight. And the terrorists will lose. Syria and Russia will regain Aleppo. And we can see right now the United States government central bankers, they're already looking to separate Syria. Because we can see right now that the U.S. Army is carrying on and they're building additional bases in Syria, in the region near Raqqa and up in that area. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to establish a different area to create a separation. This is their plan right now. And I think they're going to go full force right now uh, before Trump gets into the White House. So we see many things occurring at this point. And we understand that these individuals, they are never, ever going to give up. They're going to push their agenda. No matter if Trump is in the White House or another person's in the White House, those individuals, they are calling the shots right now. And we will know by Trump's actions on what is happening. Actually, after he's inaugurated, and he comes out and he makes his first speech. We need to look at his expression because at that point in time, he'll be told what has been happening, what the real situation is, what's really going on with the economy, what's really going on around the world. He'll have um, a talking to by the shadow government, the central bank, and all the rest. And we'll have to look at his expression and what he looks like when he comes out and what he says when he comes out because we can see right now we need to be looking at his actions what he plans to do does he plan to go up against these individuals or is he planning to side with these individuals and we will know from his actions listen everyone thanks a lot for listening be well be safe and especially be prepared thanks a lot Now, out in India, the government in India has recently made a move to ban large currency notes. And they're basically pushing towards a cashless society. They removed the 500, the 1,000 rupee note. They were banned throughout the country. And we see right now that you might be thinking, well, these are very big notes. Who really cares? I mean, who carries this around? But they exchange for just a few American dollars and represent 85% of the cra the cash transactions in the country and everyone is going to experience once this economy comes down now we understand trump is now setting up his new cabinet he's filling positions he's also looking at everything the government has done and i want everyone to be a little bit careful about saying, oh, he's going to do everything he said he was going to do. We still have the shadow government. We still have them pushing bills, trying to get rid of their old bills. And there was complete chaos in the region. And we can see many areas were shutting down. 
like the traders in Delhi's vegetable market. They said they were shutting down the market because cash was running out, and the banks and the ATMs were dispensing a little bit of cash. People couldn't get their hands on it. And we've talked about this in many, many reports where the economic collapse would make it where you couldn't get cash. Banks would shut down. The ban sparked a run on the banks in India this week with customers forming massive lines at banks trying to get their cash out while they stood could. And what happened was the ATM machines, they were emptied. Nearly half of India's 202,000 ATMs were shut down on Friday because they ran out of cash. And people stood on lines. They were trying to get the new bill. ATMs would be emptied. Actually, Cliff High, where I just did an interview with him on Friday, which is on the X22 Report Spotlight YouTube channel, in his reports, it says ATMs will not have cash in them. Actually, there'll be a cash crisis. And we can see these are examples around the world of what it would look like. And we can see right now, at each one of these countries, they are experiencing what